Who am I? It's the year of 1998, and I'm a 13-year-old, half black, half Puerto Rican boy, living in the projects in the Bronx of New York City. And I got my first job packing bags at a supermarket. You see, some way, somehow, the charisma and tenacity of my mother ended up convincing the supervisor at this supermarket to give an underage boy a job. And that happened to be one of the most specialist experiences of my life. I'll never forget that one Saturday morning that I left with $30 in my pocket of quarters, nickels, and dimes. And I know most of you are saying $30 isn't much, but for me, it wasn't the money. It was a sense of accomplishment. It was me seeing myself exercise my will and apply my effort to gain a result. And I became empowered with that process of creating. I fell in love with it, the hustle. I enjoyed it. And that led me to continue to work in different areas, odd end jobs like retail, customer service, telemarketing. And I landed my first real job right around the age of 21, working at a special education high school in the South Bronx as a paraprofessional. For those of you that don't know what that means, it's a fancy term for assistant teacher. <laughs> and I'll never forget my first day. The assistant principal walked me upstairs, and I'm getting ready to go into this classroom, and I got on Sunday's best. You know, your first real job, shirt and tie kind of thing. And I walk into the classroom, and I walk over to the student, and I say, good morning. My name is Mr. A, and he slowly stands up, looks me dead in my eye, and he says, F you. Brushes by me, runs out the classroom, down the hall, and down the stairs. I look over to my assistant principal, and she says, go ahead and chase him. <laughs> now, I don't need to go into great detail of how my year and a half was at that job, but through that little narrative, you can get an idea of what it was like. But you see, something special happened to me while working at that school. For the first time, I got the opportunity to be outside of myself, witnessing myself. Now, what do I mean by that? These kids were just like me, born and raised in the projects, cut from the same cloth, dealing with the same obstacles, trying to overcome their circumstances, wanting more out of life. And what happened to me in that situation was I started to feel the responsibility that I had to be a role model for them. And for the first time in my life, I felt like this could possibly be like my purpose or something. Maybe to be an example, give them a point of reference of something that they can model and look after to change their behavior. But you see, for those of you that have been to New York, maybe even lived in New York, you guys know, New York will chew you up and spit you out. And at that time in my life, I wasn't grounded. I wasn't centered. Life got the best of me. I mean, at times, I was even homeless, sleeping in my car. And I needed a change. And I reached out to my best friend who had just moved to Delaware. And I said, listen, I need to get out of New York I don't really have too many options. Could this be a possibility? And he said, yeah. I think Delaware could be a great look for you. And I said, Dela what? <laughs> and he said, Delaware. And I, in my mind, I'm like, is this in like New Hampshire or Colorado? Or, and he's like, no, 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 no. It's like two hours down the turnpike. I said, OK. I don't have anything to lose. Let me go to Delaware. I get to Delaware and I continue my world of education working with youth, ranging from special education advising, behavior counseling, IEP development, you name it. I even left Delaware and worked in a maximum security youth prison upstate New York, where I was working with kids that were 14 years old doing 25 years to life. Something that I didn't even know existed and after working there for 10 months and being stressed out, 
I need to change my environment once again. I moved back to Delaware and I found myself in an elementary school and I experienced something that would change my life forever. You see, up to this point, I had five, six years of professional experience. And this time, I was in the in-school suspension room and a kid was sent to me for bad behavior. Typical protocol. I engage in conversation. What happened? What could have you done better? The nurse calls upstairs and says, hey, I need you to bring him downstairs to take his meds. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. I take him downstairs, he gets his meds, we come back upstairs. In about 10 minutes, I hear a noise coming from his desk. I look up, and this kid is knocked out sleep, snoring. I mean, to the point to where he's literally drooling on his arm. And I walk over slowly, and now I'm scared because I'm the only one in the room with him, and I try to wake him up. And he doesn't wake up. Now I'm even more scared. So I apply a little pressure, and he finally wakes up. He looks up at me, semi-conscious, and goes right back to sleep. And in that moment, something happened to me. I realized that, could I possibly be the problem? because I obviously wasn't the solution. After seven years of working professionally with kids, when were we ever going to get to the root cause of the problem? Man, when were we ever going to understand the root cause of the problem? And if I'm going to be sitting here taking a paycheck to be doing something, it got to be more than just band-aiding and treating the surface level reactive of what is happening. And I no longer could settle with just doing that. So I quit my job. And I went looking for an alternative method to education, a different way to help these kids. And one day, one day while being on Facebook, I saw this ad and it said, consciousness-based education. And the only reason why I clicked on it was because I couldn't pronounce nor spell the word. And I figured if it got to be that difficult to spell or understand, maybe I need to check it out. And I went to their website and the school was named Maharishi University of Management. They specialize in transcendental meditation, vegetarian organic food, Ayurveda, and yoga. Words that I had no idea even existed. But again, because it was so different, it was appealing, it intrigued me. And I said, you know what? This is the school I'm going to go to. And people thought I was crazy. And I'll never, I'll never forget the experience of me telling people that I was leaving the comfort of my job and my lifestyle right here in Delaware to literally move to the middle of nowhere surrounded in cornfields in Iowa. Now at the time, the only thing I knew that came to mind when I heard the word Iowa was children of the corn. <laughs> and by far, that has to be probably one of the top five scariest movies of my childhood. Something about Malachi just doesn't settle well with me. Between that and Pet Cemetery. So I leave the comfort of my world and I move to Iowa. And here I am at this consciousness based education university and I'm practicing meditation. Yes, black people meditate. And I'm practicing yoga. Yes, black people do yoga. And I adopt this vegan lifestyle and my life begins to change. And after three months of practicing yoga, I lost my first 65 pounds. To put things into perspective, I am currently down 110 pounds. And no, that is not Suge Knight on the left. <laughs> that is me, Jason Aviles. And something amazing happened to me in that space during that three years. I found a solution. I found something I could package into a service that would help kids develop a greater understanding of who they are so they could live a greater quality of life. And the great thing was, it happened so organically. It happened through me first. So after spending three years there, I developed my own interdisciplinary bachelor's degree in youth development and social change. And I moved right back to Delaware. And I launched my first company called Fly Yogi which is a 100% mobile yoga company that provides yoga instruction for youth in schools, corporate environments, and communities at large. 
And as most of you know, because some of you I'm sure are entrepreneurs and small business owners, one of the first things they tell you to do is to network, network, and network. So one time I find myself attending this network event and I get the infamous question all the time, what do you do? And my answer about 100% of the time is, I don't know. <laughs> a lot. That's what I do. I do a lot. But this one particular conversation sparked something different. He wanted to really know about what I'm doing and who I am. And he said, well, you know, I've heard you say that you teach yoga and you have this yoga company. Is there anything else you're working on? And I say, yes, you know, I'm working on this project called Wilmington Green Box. And he says, tell me a little bit about it. And I said, well, do you know that 23.5 million Americans in the United States live in what we call the food desert? In fact, over 70% of residents here in Wilmington live in a food desert, meaning that you live more than a half a mile away from a grocery store. Crime has been on the increase by over 27% here in Wilmington over the last year. Our youth are struggling to find employment opportunities that teach them entrepreneurship skills and mentor them through the process at the same time. And I said, listen, I have this project. It's going to take these at-risk teens and it's going to train them, educate them, hire them. And in turn, they're going to be responsible for handling the daily operations of this project that's going to provide direct access to healthy goods and fresh produce to areas that are classified as food deserts. And on top of that, these products that we're going to purchase and sell, they're all going to be purchased locally from local food companies because we need to support our local economy. And his response to all of that was this. You sound like a social entrepreneur. And I asked myself, am I a social entrepreneur? You see, I've heard these words before. But at that moment, it resonated with me. Could this possibly be it? We normally don't see the word social next to entrepreneur, because entrepreneur, for the most part, people understand that it's about making money, developing systems, business models, revenue, products, services. And then the social part, we mainly connect with the nonprofit sector. It's about caring about people, making an impact. But for me, I never saw the two as being separate. And really where that comes from is my understanding through practicing yoga. In fact, the word yoga itself means union. And in the essence of understanding that union, there's this very simple but profound truth. And that is this, that we are all connected. It's almost as if we're different branches of the same tree. And even though we perceive each other to be different through our senses, whether that be through race or label or title, in our essence, in our being, we're not only created from, but we're connected to the same source. So whether I understand myself to be different or not, essentially, when I serve, when I give, I'm serving and giving to myself. And when I serve and give to myself, I'm serving and giving to others. And social entrepreneurship is exactly about that. It's about transforming the way that we think and the way that we do business that keeps the people that we most dearly care about in mind while still being okay with making money, because we get it, it's needed, it's important. And when we developed Wilmington Green Box, we came up with a model that we call a win-win-win. We said, we're gonna train and educate the kids to work, and at the same time, we're gonna develop this product and service to the community, and at the same time, we're gonna purchase these products to support the local community. And you see, something special in that happened. Just under two seasons of being in operation, we have trained, educated, and employed six at-risk teens from the local community with little to no funds. We have purchased over 2,100 local goods from local food companies. And we've served over 1,000 
people. And really all of this comes from a more even important question that we, have, we should all ask ourselves. Who am I? And no matter how we define that, no matter how we labor ourselves, I want you all to keep in mind that let that spark of curiosity lead you to this fact, that we are all connected. And caring for each other shouldn't be a luxury. It should be a responsibility. Namaste. Yeah.